From The Australian, here's What's on the Front. I'm Kristen Amiot. It's Wednesday, October 2. A Sydney accountant who installed dummy directors in dozens of companies has been charged with 16 criminal offences by the corporate regulator. Wayne Fraser faced the Downing Centre District Court on Tuesday, where he's accused of making or authorising false or misleading statements in documents lodged with the Australian Securities and Investments Commission. That story is live right now at theaustralian.com.au. Hundreds of Iranian rockets have rained down over parts of Israel in a retaliatory attack for the death of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. It comes less than a day after the Israeli Defence Force launched a targeted incursion of southern Lebanon. In Australia, a political row has erupted over the way police handle breaches of our new hate speech laws after protesters waved flags emblazoned with Hezbollah insignia. In today's episode, why nobody can agree on how we police hatred. At mosques across Western Sydney on Monday night, Muslim clerics preached to hundreds of worshippers. They were reflecting on the death of Hassan Nasrallah, the charismatic but reclusive leader of Lebanese terrorist organisation Hezbollah, who was killed in a targeted Israeli airstrike days earlier. They called him a history maker. They said his blood was not shed in vain. They called him a supporter of the oppressed and an inspiration for future generations. The services were so well attended that worshippers spilled out onto the streets surrounding the Al Rahman Mosque in Kingsgrove. Pictures posted to the mosque's social media profiles show children wearing clothing emblazoned with Hezbollah insignia. On Tuesday, Home Affairs Minister Tony Burke slammed the commemorations, joining a growing chorus concerned about public support for Hezbollah. Well, the the government doesn't mourn him for one minute, not for one minute, but I'll tell you, there are civilians who have been killed who we mourn. In the wake of Nasrallah's death, supporters rallied in Melbourne and Sydney. They carried Hezbollah flags and portraits of its slain leader, which is illegal under Australian law. They chanted Labeka Ya Nasrallah in Arabic, which translates to At Your Service Nasrallah or Here I Am Nasrallah. The Australian Federal Police said it'll consider prosecuting at least six people who attended the rally in Melbourne for displaying pro Hezbollah material. If convicted, they could face up to 12 months in prison. But there's a catch. We've used an AI voice generator to read a statement from the Australian Federal Police. The mere public display of a prohibited symbol on its own does not meet the threshold of a Commonwealth offence. The Criminal Code sets out very specific elements that must be met in order to charge an individual with a prohibited symbol offence. Basically, even if the cops deem the behaviour is illegal, they may not be able to do anything about it. Opposition leader Peter Dutton says that's not good enough. He's called for Parliament to be recalled to criminalise these kinds of public displays of support for terrorist organisations. Home Affairs Minister Tony Burke said he'll consider cancelling the visas of anyone found to be inciting discord in Australia. We do have a higher standard in Australia if you're on a visa as to what's expected. If you're on a visa in anyone's country, you're there as a guest and inciting discord is a reason for me to refuse visas and a reason for me to cancel. But Attorney General Mark Dreyfus, who's the nation's most senior legal figure, says that's not their job. 
Mark Dreyfus's position is that the Labor government passed new hate speech laws at the end of last year, and it's up to the police to enforce those laws. Joe Kelly is The Australian's national affairs editor. And Mark Dreyfus says it's not the role of the political system, politicians or MPs to direct the police to make arrests. So essentially, he's trying to say that Peter Dutton has gone a little bit too far. This is a tense political moment for Australia. And Peter Dutton is making the case that we shouldn't be living in an Australian society where people can go out on the streets and protest and display the symbols of terrorist organisations that are prohibited. He contends that it is within the scope of those new hate speech laws for people to be arrested because of those actions. And he says if there is any doubt about that, then the laws need to be strengthened urgently. But I think the broader issue is that Peter Dutton is now constructing a political narrative going all the way back to October 9, when there were those protests outside the Opera House, which took place before Israel had retaliated in response to the October 7 attacks, and basically said, we haven't seen sufficient leadership, that the government hasn't been doing and saying the right things. And so leadership takes many manifestations. It's the position that leaders adopt. It's what they say. It sets the tone. And Peter Dutton is effectively saying they've set the wrong tone and everything that has transpired since October 7 has been influenced by that tone. So I think that's the central political dragon that Labor is seeking to contend with at the moment, this perception that's been created that they haven't been tough enough. And so if you look at how many arrests uh, have been made by people protesting, it's been reported that there have been two people who were uh, protesting, displaying Nazi imagery, but not really any arrests made in relation to what we're seeing with anti-Semitism, support for terrorist organisations and the like. Coming up, inside Israel's move on Lebanon. Subscribers to The Australian are first to hear breaking news out of the Middle East. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. For almost a year, ever since the Gaza-based terrorist group Hamas launched a deadly attack on southern Israel, Hezbollah has been firing rockets across the border, thousands of them. In that time, Israel's been planning. On Tuesday morning, in defiance of calls for a ceasefire by the United States and others, it took its opportunity. As supporters mourned the death of terrorist leader Hassan Nasrallah, the Israeli Defence Force began an anticipated ground incursion of parts of Lebanon. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, local time, the IDF confirmed it would embark on limited, localised and targeted raids over the border in southern Lebanon. These operations were approved and carried out in accordance with the decision of the political echelon. Israel also launched airstrikes on Lebanon's capital city, Beirut, where it says it struck weapons manufacturing facilities, and Damascus in nearby Syria, where it was reportedly targeting Major General Maha al-Assad, the brother of President Bashar al-Assad. A Syrian journalist reported on the social platform X, formerly known as Twitter, that the bombing targeted a meeting of military leaders between Hezbollah and the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, with which al-Assad was reportedly affiliated. Around the same time, the United States moved its military forces into place in hopes of deterring a counterattack by Iran, Hezbollah's powerful backer. Fears of retaliation by Iran ramped up following the death of Nasrallah, who they considered a close ally. As the raids got underway in Lebanon, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sent a message to the Iranian people. With every passing moment, the regime is bringing you, the noble Persian people, closer to the abyss. Iran's tyrants don't care about your future, but you do. When Iran is finally free, and that moment will come a lot sooner than people think, everything will be different. Overnight, Iran's Revolutionary Guard fired hundreds of missiles at Israel 
with artillery and shrapnel reportedly raining down on Tel Aviv as well as areas of the holy city of Jerusalem and southern Israel. The Revolutionary Guards said in a statement that it had targeted the heart of the occupied territories in retaliation for Nasrallah's death, as well as the death of slain Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. The IDF said it wasn't aware of any casualties from the hour-long attack after Israelis were ordered into bomb shelters around the country. And it issued a warning. It said, This will have consequences. We have plans. We will act, deciding where and when. But Iran's Revolutionary Guard said in a statement it would carry out crushing attacks if those plans came to fruition. The White House confirmed US President Joe Biden had ordered US military to assist Israel in shooting down missiles. Shortly before the missile campaign, approximately 10 people were killed in a terror attack on a light rail station in the Jafar area of Tel Aviv. Israeli police said two gunmen carrying assault rifles had been neutralised. For its part, Hezbollah issued a handful of statements saying it made direct hits on IDF troops stationed in towns just across the border in northern Israel. They'd previously been designated closed military zones by the IDF. The statement said the rockets and artillery shells had been fired in solidarity with the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip and in support of their valiant and honourable resistance to IDF forces, which have been operating in the region for almost a year. Second in command, Naeem Qasem, said Hezbollah is ready for a ground engagement and has no qualms about a wider regional conflict. The assault continued in Gaza too, where the IDF says it conducted a precise strike on a Hamas command and control centre occupied by militants. Joe Kelly is The Australian's National Affairs Editor. This situation is developing quickly. You can catch up on all the latest from the Middle East anytime at theaustralian.com.au.